Caroline, thank you. Now to our continuing coverage and investigation here in the Stratmore Hills neighborhood. A massive fire overnight, explosion and flames about 2 a.m. Take a look at some of the damage behind me. A man who says he's trying to purchase this property told me that this is where the fire started. He knows who started it, but law enforcement not confirming any of that information right now, at least as far as who that might be and how it started specifically. But I can tell you that uh, about 40 firefighters at the peak of this blaze were here on scene trying to contain it. They did do that at this homeless encampment at again about uh, 3 o'clock in this morning. Finally got it under control. We are just north of South Academy Boulevard, just w east, I should say, of B Street here in the Stratmore Hills neighborhood. Initially, this came in as a structure fire. However, no homes around here burn. That's the good news. However, Looking around me, some of the RVs burned, cars were burned out. There's a lot of damage here. And again, uh, the chief called this a fire safety issue as you take a look at some of the other damage. And you can see just devastating for the folks who live here. Luckily, again, no homes were destroyed in the immediate area and no injuries to report from fire investigators or first responders. Now, the fire came much too close for comforters. You can see from Ryan's shot that some of those neighborhoods right behind me, apartment complexes, condos, and other duplexes, that is the good news. Our Andy Cohen joins us now with neighbors who you spoke to today who are saying they're trying to get some answers complaining about this location and as it relates to code enforcement and what can be done to try and prevent something like this. That's right, Rob. Uh, Jennifer and uh, Adrian Aldez live in a home that borders this property and they tell us that they have been contacting code enforcement for months, concerned about the safety issues of this camp. They also told us that they are grateful to all of the firefighters for this safe, the f uh, fast response. A phone call from a neighbor warning them of the fire jolted Adrian and Jennifer Aldez out of bed. Came outside and I see four fire trucks with uh, RVs on fire. Multiple vehicles, including three RVs, a van, a car, and a boat all burned. The area too dangerous for firefighters to get close. And we used a, a defensive attack on this fire to begin with due to the high amount of propane bottles. There were some explosions from the propane tanks. I would say around 50 explosions. No injuries were reported, but the Aldez family believes it could have been avoided. This was bound to happen. We knew this was going to happen. I kept telling code enforcement, they're so close to everything, and they've got all these structures and propane tanks and vehicles. They say this homeless camp showed up about two years ago. It's located on private property, and the people who live here are not trespassing, according to the county. Nevertheless, the Aldezes have been calling code enforcement with concerns about public safety and sanitation. I mean, it definitely could have gotten bad if these traders could have went up. Then it would have been right next to my house. And then what, what, what next? What, what's going to happen to us? We get this place for this. The fire chief said favorable weather conditions kept the fire from getting much worse. We feel very blessed with the, uh, you know, the wet conditions that we've had over the last couple of months and the, the low wind. Had this been a red flag day, we certainly would have lost residential structures. A county spokesperson told us there is an active code enforcement case against the property owner. They're asking the court to hold that owner accountable and if necessary, to allow the county to enter to remove rubbish and to require anyone occupying the property to be removed along with their vehicles and belongings. And the county encourages anyone experiencing homelessness to reach out to our service providers for help, like the Springs Rescue Mission or Salvation Army. And Rob, they also told us that county staff have asked for an extra $150,000 in next year's budget to help with homeless camp cleanups. Andy, thank you. And we did see the Red Cross. They had some people out here trying to help these folks if they may want to move to a different location. Now